اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب. انا انزلناه في ليلة القدر وما ادراك ما ليلة القدر. ليلة القدر خير من الف شهر. تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر. So today I might say something that please don't kill me. Okay. There are four levels of qadr. Al qadr, layla qadr. Let me first ask by asking you a question. And before I ask this question, I want to mention if we were to solve a problem, the problem is. Different ulama experienced Laylatul Qadr on different nights. Some experienced it on the 21st. Some experienced it on the 25th. Some great scholars and pious people experienced it on the 27th. And the Jumhur is with the 27th. On the one side we have this. Different people experiencing Laylatul Qadr on different nights. And on the other side, you have, so just keep this in mind. And the Prophet said, look for Laylatul Qadr when? On the odd nights of last ten days. Now let me ask you a question. Can the night in which Quran was revealed to the Prophet ever be repeated? Yes. No. Al-Laylatul Qadr, the night in which Qur'an came down to the Prophet, can that ever come again? No. No. That night can never come again. Right? So, what is going on here? What is this Laylatul Qadr? The day the Prophet became a Prophet, that was the day he became the Prophet. That was Laylatul Qadr. And that night will never come again. So there are four levels of Laylatul Qadr. And we pay attention only to the fourth level, the lowest level. The lowest level, or we pay attention to the level that is the least important aspect of Laylatul Qadr. The first two you can say when you read the Qur'an, the first two are more emphasized. And when you read the Ahadith literature, the last two are more emphasized in that. So you can see this harmony between them. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. We revealed it in the night of the qadr, meaning the night in which the Prophet became a prophet. That's never going to happen again. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. And what can give you an idea? Okay, also, just very quickly. Because the word Qadr has many meanings. For example, one of the meanings of the word Qadr is restriction. When we restrict someone's rizq. Why? One of the examples the scholars give is because there's so many angels that everything is what? Restricted. There's no space. There's no empty space. Another example is that because when the Quran came down, the, restriction, the, the, the jinn were restricted from going to the to the sky. So one meaning of Qadr is Qadr alayhi rizqahu is to be what? <coughs> Restricted. The other meaning which I'd like to pay more attention to is the word Qadr means value. Ma qadarullaha haqqa qadr. They didn't value Allah as Allah ought to be valued. The night that needs to be valued. Why does this night need to be valued? Right? So this is one aspect. Now the third meaning is the one that we usually pay attention to. Qadr means destiny or your predetermination, this aspect. But ma qadrullah haqqa qadri, what is the value of this night? Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. We reveal this Quran on the night that is of great value, tremendous value. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr. What can tell you what is the tremendous value of this night? And by the way, Laylatul Qadr doesn't necessarily have to be at night. Because in Quranic language, when Allah says night, 
it automatically means day. وَإِذَا خَدْنَا مُوسَى أَرْبَعِينَ When we took Musa for 40, what? Nights. Nights. Now when you look at the story of the Prophet when he's seeing Jibreel for the first time, does it seem like night or day? Think about it. Maybe it was, and I'm giving a hint here, حَتَّى حَتَّى not as in until, until, hatta as in until a point of to meet a certain goal. Hatta مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ Because the Prophet was able to clearly see everything. So there was some daylight there, for sure. So meaning, don't stop your ibadah at fajr time, but till beyond a little bit from fajr time. Because it is till مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ And my opinion is, my personal opinion is, that it was at this time of مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ this event happened. It couldn't have been happening at night. It doesn't seem like it from the event. It was at Matlai al-Fajr, it was when there was just a little bit light of Fajr, that's when the Prophet experienced this event. Allah knows best. Or, the other opinion could be that it was in the daytime. But it's hard to see this event when Jibreel came down to the Prophet and said, read, this all happening at night, and Allah knows best. Right? This is just an opinion, and other people can have other opinions. So the meaning of Qadr, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ We sent this night on the day of tremendous value. Why? Because this Qur'an was going to come and change history. It was going to change everything. And look at the tremendous value this Qur'an has brought to humanity. For those people that have embraced. So, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرُ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ The Laylatul Qadr, its value is better than a thousand months. Doesn't mean just a thousand months. But means better than anything in all of history ever. That this, Allah decided to open the doors of khayr, of goodness, for all humanity. And to give His biggest ni'mah. اليوم أكملت لكم ni'mati Today I have, when the Qur'an, the last meaning Qur'an was being finished, my ni'mah, my blessings have been completed upon you. Allah has decided to open the doors of khayr, of goodness, of all goodness, and to complete that goodness, the guidance that humanity needs for all, until the Day of Judgment. No more prophets coming after every little time. Just one last prophet until the Day of Judgment, and then it will be, uh, it will be complete ni'mah of Allah. Al-yawma akmantu lakum ni'mah. I have completed my ni'mah upon you. Allah decided on that night, in which the night the Prophet, or that day, or that morning, where the Prophet became the Prophet, that today I'm going to open the doors of khayr for all of you. We sent it down on that night of Laylatul Qadr, that night of great value. And what can tell you what is that tremendous value? Laylatul Qadri khayru min alfi shahr. It is better than a thousand months, better than anything that has ever happened in the history of mankind. This is one level of what? Laylatul One level. So we don't realize that what a tremendous value Islam brought to humanity. Man was in the dark ages, Europe was stuck in the dark ages. Islam took humanity out of the dark ages out of superstition, out of all these forms of knowledge that had no basis into a world of reality, right? That threw the world into the direction that it went into now in the modern times. And Islam did that. So that's the first level. The second level. We set down this Quran on the night of great what? Value. The word qadr means what? Value, it means qadr also, but first, most primarily, it means what? The value of this Qur'an is that if you follow it, if you follow the, no the knowledge in this Qur'an, What can tell you what a blessed night this is? The word blessing is used in another surah for this same night. In the night of blessings. 
And what can tell you what the value of this is? It is better than a thousand months, meaning better that this Quran will give you the guidance. Right? It will give you the guidance, like Brother Isa was saying, it will give you the guidance that is better than a lifetime of doing good. Because it will tell you everything that you need to do. You need to... Shah Ramadan, Shah, the month of Ramadan is the month in which Quran is revealed. And then this night is the night Allah chose to open the doors of good. And if you follow this Quran, it's better than a thousand months of doing good. Khayru min al This is the second meaning. The third meaning, which is also important, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look for Laylatul Qadr when? We usually take Laylatul Qadr to mean this is the night we have to do dua for our children, for our parents, for our relatives. It definitely is, especially the last ten nights. But when the Prophet was talking about Laylatul Qadr, what did he mean when he said to Aisha, when Aisha said, what should I pray to Allah in Laylatul Qadr? Everyone knows the dua, right? What is the dua? Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbul afwa'afwan. Because the goal of Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, the last ten nights of Ramadan, the goal is, just as the Prophet had an experience with the angels, you need to give yourself a spiritual experience on the last ten nights of Ramadan. And to do that, you have to be connected to the Book of Allah. And then Allah will open up the doors of His spiritual experience. This is called Ihsan. That as if the doors of the unseen have been what? Opened for you. That you worship Allah, you worship Allah. This is why Itikaf is in the last ten nights of Ramadan. Why? So that you can be in Itikaf, you can dedicate yourself to Allah. So that maybe in the last ten nights, meaning seek Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights of, of Ramadan, not in the sense that any particular date is Laylatul Qadr, but at any odd night, because Allah is odd and He loves, in Allah with wa yuhibbun with Allah is odd and He loves odd. It may be that on an odd night, Allah will give you an experience that you will never forget. Allah will open the doors of the unseen for you, like many of the scholars report. For example, seeing different things happening before them, seeing the moon, for example, in sujood, for example, seeing nur around them. For example, Imam Nawi reports this about himself, that he saw nur everywhere on the 27th of Ramadan. So some experience happens. It could be on any of the any of the odd nights. This is when Allah revealed the Quran in the month of Ramadan. But you can seek a special experience with Allah. Right? On any of the... You, you struggle to get it. If you don't get it on the 21st, you might get it on the 23rd. If you don't get it on the 23rd, you might get it on the 25th. And this is perhaps the reason why different scholars have experienced Laylatul Qadr in that sense on different what? On different nights. That you can experience Laylatul, experience the unseen on any of what, one of the odd nights that Allah, I'm going to take five minutes more today. Uh, any, any of the odd nights, Allah may open the doors of the unseen for you. So very lucky are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door of the unseen for them on the last 10, ten days of Ramadan. Anywhere from the 21st to the 29th. Now the fourth one is the one that we usually talk about and we're only focused on this. Even though the first three are more important. Having a personal experience with the unseen is more important. Because then your dua will really be powerful. If you almost experience the unseen. Right? It's almost like when Ibrahim says to Allah, How do you give life to the dead? Do you not believe? Right? He says, yeah. I want infinan in my heart that you give, really give life to the dead. And so that's the type. I mean, with the Prophet, when he saw Jibreel and Jibreel, and I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I'll mention this very quickly and then I'll go back to the topic. When the Prophet was hugged by Jibreel, you know the Prophet, he describes it, that it was really, really hard on him, he couldn't breathe, right? Then the next time when he saw Jibreel, this is why it's said, Ya yuhal muzammin, and then Ya yuhal mudathir. Mudathir and muzammin mean the same thing, but these are two different events, in two different times in which the Prophet saw the angel. The second time, because now this was a shock, and so now there was fritzatul wahi. The revelation was not coming down for some time, because the Prophet needed to heal from that shock. 
that was a great shock to the Prophet that, you know, whatever he went through. And so now when he saw Jibreel by the mountain the second time, sitting on a chair, this is what the Hadith says, the Prophet again became, because it reminded him of that experience. And so then again, just reminding him of that experience made him run back to his wife and he said the same thing, cover me, cover me, cover me. Even though Jibreel didn't grab him, or he did say, you are the Prophet of Allah. But after that is when, after that revelation started coming quickly. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that the first, just as the Prophet had that experience, you can't have the experience the Prophet had. You can't have an angel come and give you wahi, that's never going to happen, right? A, a angel going from Allah to you, that's not going to happen. But other experiences, a true dream can happen. You can experience, you can meet an angel. Some other experience can happen that can open the doors of the unseen to you in these odd nights. This is what I'm saying. Now, number one, Quran came down to change this, the first meaning. Second meaning, this Quran gives you the opportunity to do so many good deeds that it's like a whole life worth of good deeds. Number three, at least in the last ten nights, seek an ex personal, a private, personal experience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now fourth is the one that we usually pay attention to, so I'll say a few words about that. We sent down this on, the, on a particular night, meaning on the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, 29th, on any one particular night we sent down this Quran. Now that was the sending of down of the Quran. What does this have to do with your qadr? With your destiny? What is the link between the Quran coming down and your personal destiny? What is the link? I'll tell you the link. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu says Inna Allah yarfa'u bihadhi aqwaman wa yada'u bihi akhari Allah will raise nations because of their attitude towards Qur'an. And Allah will throw down the nations because of their attitude towards Qur'an. First and foremost, Allah decides the collective fate of a people always. Allah always decides what? Collective fate of a fate of a people always first, before the individual. And Allah even says, وَلَا uh, Allah says, fear that fitna. Fear that trial, that difficulty, that will not just strike the bad people amongst you. Right? It was the dua of... Anyway, this will become a longer topic. But Allah decides the fate of what? What is the Ummah of Muhammad doing with Quran? That's the collective fate. Are you going to be more in tighter grips of divine punishment? Or Allah will open the doors of mercy. Inna Allah yarfa'u bihadhi aku. Allah raises the nations because of their attitude towards Qur'an. And Allah throws down the nations because of their attitude towards the Qur'an. So Allah has now seen the month of Ramadan, the month in which Allah revealed the Qur'an. Allah has seen what is their attitude towards Qur'an. Inna qawmi takhadu hadhal Qur'ana mahjura. Right? So the Prophet is quoted in Quran saying that uh, the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu he will complain to Allah on the Day of Judgment. This people of mine, my Ummah, they have thrown the Quran behind their backs. They threw Quran behind their backs. The Prophet will complain about this on the Day of Judgment. You know, there, so I forget which surah it is right now, and leave in my mind, the Prophet once asked the companion of the Prophet, read Quran. He said, you I have to read Quran to you? He said, yeah, I'd like to hear it. And then the verse of the Qur'an came, وَجِعْنَا بِكَ عَلَىٰ هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا We will bring you as a prosecution witness, meaning on behalf of the government of Allah, you will be a witness against your own people. So the collective fate comes first, then the individual fate. Now what is the individual fate? Okay, so I'll end here and then inshallah we'll continue. What the individual fate is, and how to make your individual fate better. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.